around 65 or 66, I guess it was, about that time where we had contacted a few people at the uh, Warren Sewer Clothing Company in Bowden, Georgia. Bowden, because the Bremen Bowden Associates. And uh, a group of them walked out on strike. And uh, as a result of that, well, we signed up the majority of the people, but we lost the election, and we lost the election of the race issue, I think. Uh, I think it was a predominating factor that caused us to lose that election because while there was nothing we could prove, there were three, I call it, three actually separate plants. They were all in, which are separate buildings, but there's, I called it the compound. Had a coat shop and a top coat shop and a pants plant, making the suits. And the uh, day before the day of the election, the board agents came down, and as we went in to, to uh, inspect the polls, uh, something the company had, uh, no company had ever done before. It took us all through all the plants, inside and outside, walking across dirt, when, and took us in the last building where the election was going to be held last. And it was not necessary to take us through all those buildings. Mm -hmm. And I thought at the time it was something funny. Mm -hmm. Usually the company will take you in the door nearest the poles, and that's all they'll let you mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. But they took us through every one of the plants, walked us through, mm -hmm. and the men holding the election among one of them was Maynard Jackson, who's working for the NLRB. And that was the first time I had ever seen Maynard Jackson. Mm -hmm. And so we had the election, and that night, after the election was over and we were back at the Union Hall, some people asked me if he was a Negro. Asked me if it was a Negro who helped hold the election. Mm -hmm. Asked me if he was a Negro, mm -hmm. and I said, well, I don't know, and I frankly didn't. Because when it was light, I didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. But that's what had happened all during the day, the police going around, see there who they hold an election, they got a Negro holding an election. And I think that caused us losing. And then I realized why the company had prayed us all through those plants, Maybe. so they could be sure. Was there a big upsurge in using the race issue against the union after 54? Or had that been done all along? It had been done, yes. All the CIO, we were known as, they were called as nigger lovers and communists, and the, 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 even some of the AFL groups, while it was separate use that e even in talking to people mm -hmm. when they're trying to get them to join their union instead of ours. Mm -hmm. They use the same thing that the bosses use, mm -hmm. especially the United Garment Workers. They use the same tactics the bosses did and mm -hmm. go reds and nigger lovers and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Why was the United Garment Workers so, uh, since, why did they stick to trips like that so much? They needed shops, I guess. They wanted the membership. They went everywhere we went. We go start a campaign, they'd be right there the next day or two, hoping. And I've, I know for a fact that they tell the company, look, if you accept us, you know, get the company to accept them. Mm -hmm. And I think that deal was made with Salant and Salant. Because mm -hmm. we were in a campaign with Salant and Salant. Had been mm -hmm. in a running campaign with Salant and Salant since the 30s, since they come into the South. Mm -hmm. Had never been able to make no hay or headway, but after World War II, we began to make some headway, and we won a couple of elections. And lo and behold, overnight, one weekend, they signed a contract with the United Garment Works for the rest of their plants. As far as I knew, they had no campaigns going in there, but they signed contracts. Mm -hmm. How many members they got to join, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And some of them are still under contract today with the United Garment Workers, and we have some in our union. Mm -hmm. But the ones we've organized, we had to win them with elections. They never had an election as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Well, after World War II, the garment industry moved into the south at a rapid rate. After World War II, yes, mm -hmm. because I think this changed. How, is it, how has that affected the union, the movement of the industry into the south? How has it affected the union as a whole? Has the union moved? 
Mm-hmm. Well, predominantly the heads of the industry still in these New York, Chicago, mm-hmm. Philadelphia, mm-hmm. still based there. Mm-hmm. Plants may be here, but they're based back there. So the mm-hmm. union has to be based back there. Mm-hmm. But uh, we have the largest joint board thing, the joint board in the United States. What? Southern region joint board. Southern eight region eight southern board. states. Mm-hmm. Southeastern states. Mm-hmm. And that change has meant, is, it, is the industry moved into the south? Although we're the biggest joint board, we're still the poorest. <laughs> in really? Money. Why is that? Well, we're newly organized. We're still having that. It's so widespread. The expenses are more down here. Mm-hmm. While the north shops pretty well concentrated, mm-hmm. the facilities can be used down here. We have to have almost separate facilities for every local union. Mm-hmm. We still have to depend on the membership in the North Tempest. They still are. Mm-hmm. They're paying all the, practically pay the entire expense. They pay all the organized expense and the biggest degree of the service and expense is going mm-hmm. to the national office still. Mm-hmm. The, it's, um, you were saying earlier that um, when the, before World War II, most of the membership, or um, at least a majority or more of the membership in, were men. Worked in well, the I'd say a, a large person, I mean, if not, the mm-hmm. majority, down but, near it. Mm-hmm. But is the, is the... Uh, and then Pennsylvania shirt plants, they began to go into shirt plants in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Why didn't but predominantly, men, men's clothing was men. Mm-hmm. Why didn't men move into the into work in the garment industry in the South? After I don't think they've ever been used to that type of work. They've done rougher work. As a rule, most of the people who came to this country started out the garment industry, had came here some years is the type of work. Mm-hmm. They just don't work out once they've done manual labor with their hands, farming, and rough work. They don't mm-hmm. work out as good. Now, a lot of the young men during the war, and we have to get a few men now back on the sewing machine. Mm-hmm. There are some men now, few, coming in in our shirt plants mm-hmm. in North Alabama and taking sewing machine jobs. Mm-hmm. We find them happening. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with it. They make good operators. And, uh, because they used to run the industry. They mm-hmm. used to hand work the work done by women, but all the sewing machine jobs were probably done by men in the old clothing days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And shirt workers, too. A lot of shirt workers were men. So, what proportion of the membership are women now? Oh, overwhelming well, majority, I'd say 90%. Mm-hmm. If you don't count our, our wire houses. Or well, a lot of women now, you know, of course, now since women take it any job. So the jobs that used to be thought of as predominantly men's jobs because of the actual heaviness of it. Mm-hmm. With technological changes, it's easier to do. Women can do it easier mm-hmm. than used to. Certain jobs that I used to think were too hard, really too hard for women. There's those old buck presses. And lifting those big heavy cartons of shirts and mm-hmm. clothing, and it's just it's, well, it's just not as strong as a man, let's mm-hmm. face it. Uh, but with the new uh, types of equipment being brought in the industry. Mm-hmm. It makes it easier mm-hmm. for both men and women. So mm-hmm. women are getting, anymore we don't have win, women, men and women's jobs. And we went out even before the Equal Opportunity mm-hmm. Act. Mm-hmm. Well, most of the the officers of the union have been men, despite the fact that it was a a predominantly female industry. I think that's because the women allowed it to happen and never, never considered themselves a lead. I think they felt was pretty well content to play the soldier role. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know that uh, most of them that I knew of, even most of our business agents, a lot of our business agents were women. A lot of the leaders on the local and district level were women. And, uh, but for the very reason I'll tell you, that a lot of women, they look up to a man. They, they do look up to a man. Mm-hmm. I think they certainly have, and I think that they'll do it to a big degree. But mm-hmm. it, you always thought a man could deal with another man better. Mm-hmm. And to a lot of the bosses, I guess I was about, I got along, I would say I was about the first woman business agent in the South. But I'd be safe to say that when I was first in the real serious, was able to be treated on an equal basis, I mean, in, mm-hmm. in dealing with me. Not, 
Well, there's certainly men. That I had very few men that I dealt with when I was a business agent that ever tried to belittle me or to uh, think of me as unable to do the job or, mm -hmm. or felt in, uh, in felt that they were superior to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or had you, any uh, whims about dealing with me. Mm -hmm. And you certainly Gladys Dixon had every respect of everybody, whether they liked her or not. She was respected for her brains and her ability to do a job mm -hmm. by industry. Mm -hmm. What about by other people in the union? Oh, by well, other people in the union, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a little, even in the union, men are men, and they're going to be a little jealous sometimes mm -hmm. of women. They don't, you have to be careful how you handle these men. If you're smarter, sometimes you've got to let them think it's their idea. <laughs> do, you, have you, do you do that? Have yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've always since I had one guy one time, I could have got a, I called Gladys and I said, I can get a settlement, but he ain't going to agree with me. You're going to have to send somebody with pants on. And, and he she, come in and he said yes, but I had to. I know I had. To, I know I could get him. To, I, I, he wasn't going to say yes to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I called Gladys and I told her. I said he ain't going to say yes to me. He send anybody. He could, I come in for thirty minutes and I introduced him and gave him some kind of a title and the agreement was signed. <laughs> how did? How could you tell that that was? Well, I just had a feeling that uh, I, I, I knew I was winning the argument. Mm -hmm. And the plant manager there was, some, I'd known him for a pretty good while, and he certainly, I'd always got along with him. He had, before the before his superior entered the picture, I pretty well figured that the plant manager thought I was right. I just a hunch I had that mm -hmm. the guy wasn't going to give in to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Do you think that, that you would have, hypothetically, if you had been a man, would you be in a different position in the union today than you're in, do you think? You think no. No, I don't think so. I don't really think so. I don't think I've ever been... I don't think I've ever been uh, discriminated against because I'm one in the union. No, I don't think so. Because... Uh, there were just other women that had more seniority and certainly were more capable of being on the board than I was. And I, I, I feel that way. And I had no, I certainly felt that those people had been in the union longer than me. Mm -hmm. And certainly Gladys Dixon was far more able to do her. Mm -hmm. After all, she was a professor of economics. And, I certainly rather seen her sitting on the board than me, although she, I did have more seniority than her. Mm -hmm. But Belonka and Hillman and them, they had fight for these years, and I think they deserve the, the uh, recognition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You haven't you haven't seen men be um, promoted over you or receive more recognition than you than you no, received. No, 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 you sir. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. No, sir. I've always been equal with anybody that's been in the class, mm -hmm. with the exception of uh, Southern Directors. Mm -hmm. How do you, this is an impossible question, but you ta you say, and I think this is true, that most women are content to play the soldier role and content to work behind the scenes to make their contribution. Oh, I've never worked behind the scenes. I know. How do you account? <laughs> For the diff for you, the fact that you have not followed that kind of traditional role at all. Well, I've always uh, had my say. I never stood back. I mm -hmm. never was. I always opened my mouth, whether it's right or wrong. Had I, I had my say. Mm -hmm. and if luckily, I've been right more than I've been wrong. Mm -hmm. And I am. I've always been. I've never hesitated to speak my mind. Mm -hmm. And to anybody in this union, from Hillman on down, not only did I, I wasn't fearful of them, <coughs> and if I had been, I'd still said it because mm -hmm. I felt it needed to be said. And I have never had anything but cooperation from everybody in the union that I've mm -hmm. worked with from top mm -hmm. to bottom. Mm -hmm. When you first started down as an organizer, mm -hmm. did you have uh, any? trouble with being hassled by men in or out of the union as a young woman traveling alone and being in an unusual 
Well, not only not only that. When you're when you're out, about this, I was about the first woman organizer on the road in the thirties. You had to be very careful because a lot of women were suspicious of a woman who would get out and travel alone. Mm -hmm. There's something that this must be a tough customer to get out and do that. You had to mm -hmm. you had to first win yourself with. If I went to visit to talk to a man about joining the union, I first tried to talk to his wife. Mm -hmm. And I used to have a lot of half lack from a lot of the guys when we was trying to organize women's auxiliary before women went to work like they do now. Mm -hmm. I used to try to get women's auxiliaries to help us with the union labor movement, the consumer movement, and the women's trade union league, get the women active. Mm -hmm. And I used to be at it lastly. I think they meant it, but they pretend there's kidding it. Our place is in the home, you know, once you you ought to get your married and settle down, you mm -hmm. know. You used to tell me that. Mm -hmm. But as far as, um, and to men, you, you you know, you had to be very careful around hotels. A lot of salesmen were always trying. They figured she was on the road traveling, she was on the make, you know. Right. You had to be careful how you handled, you know. You couldn't make friends. You couldn't, you couldn't, and it's true, you, you can today. You can strike up relationship and, and talk with people on a friendly basis mm -hmm. around places without being figured that, you know that you're easy pickup, mm -hmm. but that was not true when I started on mm -hmm. the road. Just mm -hmm. figured a woman out on the road like this was traveling for other reasons, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think some of the young women today has to be very careful, mm -hmm. not to be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Did the male? So I wasn't too friendly with nobody. The male organizers have a lot more freedom in that regard to do, to. No, you know, a lot of women have so men or A lot of mm -hmm. men have trouble running from women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of the men have that kind of trouble. They have to be very careful not to make a woman mad. She, some of the women would probably, I, could, I used to see it, you know, mm -hmm. and I'd try to help the guys head it off mm -hmm. because it could cause trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to tell the men organized, look, if you go with one, uh, the others will get mad at you. You can't go with all, so mm -hmm. best to leave them all alone, treat them all alike. Some of the women would join the union just because they thought, you know, they liked the guy's look or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, well, that's nothing that's unusual. It happens in everything. Mm -hmm. You lived during, uh, for, well, I guess until... 1970 or so, for almost 20 years, you pretty much have lived on the road from the time you left the fort. Where did you, uh, how, could you tell me a little bit about what your, just your daily life is like? Well, an organized is tw pretty much a 24 hour job. Mm -hmm. Of course, I had a home and I took my summer clothes there and left them in the winter and went back in the winter and got my summer clothes. In, and, uh, Birmingham. in Birmingham, uh -huh. and uh, but I, for the most part, you know, I had to take everything I had with me in the car. I mm -hmm. might go home once a month, sometimes, sometimes be maybe three, six months. I haven't been away from home six months before mm -hmm. I got back home again. Mm -hmm. And you stay in motels in mm -hmm. different places. Stay in the motels most of the time. I. Uh, uh, and you'd be on a log campaign, especially in the early days in the thirties. You could might get you a furnished room. They had a lot you know, we we had to save money back in those days and after we was gonna be in place in the next time we tried to get in somebody's home to rent a room. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I I lived with a couple of ladies in Middlesbrough for a long time. They long they lived alone, they rented out rooms. I mean, they had a couple living in that be another one, mm -hmm. another man and his wife, and I lived in their home, mm -hmm. just like I was at home, I just mm -hmm. had to run the house. And in Huntington, I lived with, uh, in the home, uh, because there was no hotel there, but mm -hmm. I went there, and I, was, I made my, I lived at a bedroom with a man who'd been cheered there for 20 years, and he, him and his wife, his kids was all gone, and they rented me a room, not mm -hmm. that they rented rooms, but they I had no place to stay, so they mm -hmm. agreed, and I lived in their house for about four years. Mm. Who have your closest friends been over the years? Have they been mostly other organizers or other 
-hmm. Most of the people I work with, because I never had any other any time to spend. I never mm -hmm. had time to make acquaintances outside. Mm -hmm. In the early days, you didn't. A lot of the people were afraid to have anything to do with you, because usually all your associates were people who you worked with, mm -hmm. and if, and you didn't go out with an associate because. They were, frankly, afraid people find out this for the union, and you just didn't have time to uh, to make mm -hmm. it any friends outside the labor union. Mm -hmm. Of course, I have had some uh, good friends outside the labor union. Never had to spend much time with them. I uh, never had time. Mm -hmm. And organizing is working. It's work it's pretty much 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the morning you get up and you have your breakfast, you start planning, if you're making a leaflet, you're working on a leaflet, or you're planning or working with your files, and keeping them up to date, and mm -hmm. uh, getting prepared to, for the, you go out tonight, you visit people in their homes, see if you can work up a committee, and to get people who you think will be instrumental in getting other cards signed. And sometimes you just have to dig every one of them out one at a time. And uh, they can consume four or five hours a night. And the time you visit two or three people, you've made three or four major speeches. Mm -hmm. And it's tiring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you come back, you're, you can't go to bed and go to sleep because you got to unwind. And uh, the time you get into bed, it's 12, 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You get up in the morning. I've always been a person who got up in the morning. I never have <laughs> been able to lay in the bed. Mm -hmm. I get up in the morning and I eat my breakfast, read the newspaper, and get to work. Mm -hmm. And you work on leaves, and you do <coughs> you have to listen to what's going on. <coughs> you read the county papers, find out who's who. You get a lot of information. You find out who you know who. You find out all you can about the town. Mm -hmm. What's the predominant religion? How the company ships their stuff. Find out everything you possibly can about the town and everything that goes on in it. Mm -hmm. You almost have to. I mean, when somebody, you can hear somebody talking, you almost sense. You hear a name called, you know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You read the county newspaper, see who's having a family reunion, mm -hmm. who the kin folks are, and uh, all of the, you know, the burial, the habitary, obituary column, the birth columns, everything else. Mm -hmm. Then the company puts out a a lot of times in later years, companies usually put out a newsletter, and you mm -hmm. want to read that, find what's going on, hit you, find out what's going on in the shop. And it's constantly, you're either working or thinking or planning. Mm -hmm. What is this, the nature of your work done to your private life? Well, it has some effect in my private life because. Uh, I always found time to have recreation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always been interested in music of all kinds. I've always, I think it's very bad for a person to get hung into one thing and not have any outside activity. Mm -hmm. But as far as any other thing other than music or shows. And, and have you ever been drawn toward settling down in one place no, and having no, a house no and no no you never, never have, no have even you never no, uh -uh. had any regrets about no. not having that if kind i of if i were tired i'd have to have something to do i'd have to have something back to be in i'd like if i ever retired and i don't think i could ever really retire from the labor movement mm -hmm. i might have to retire go to payroll but i'd always want to be active in some way mm -hmm. certainly not with citizens Senior citizens. Right? No. <laughs> I don't believe in categorizing people out here. I think everybody ought to be mixed together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think putting the old people out together and the young people out together is the worst thing that ever happened mm -hmm. to the civilization. But I'm very interested in, and always, always been, years back, before it became popular to even talk about the atmosphere and environment and pollution, mm -hmm. been very interested, especially in pollutant of our streams. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one thing that uh, I, I don't know what can be done about it, anything. I don't know if anything can. I think people's destroying themselves for the sake of the almighty dollar. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the way it's intended to be. But I certainly want to do everything I can to make it a cleaner mm -hmm. place for people to live. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to do something like that. And I mm -hmm. think that 
I was reading in the paper last night about the apathy of people who were given the reasons for not going to vote. Mm -hmm. And I thought mm -hmm. they were the most silliest, silliest reasons mm -hmm. I ever heard in my life. And I hope I never become so, so, uh, whatever it is, these people, uh, practically all of them were saying that they didn't see no sense in voting because all the politicians were crooked. But why are they? Because, because they themselves, they didn't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that we, and that's another thing I'd like to work with, especially young people, to make them interested in trying to change things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be this way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be this way. We can change it. But we've got to get in a position to know what we want to change to. Mm -hmm. If we don't know what we want to change to, then that's the cop out to saying, you're copying out when you say I ain't going to vote because you're all alike and things are going to be this way anyhow. Mm -hmm. It means that you don't have the solution, so you're going to blame somebody else and you're going to stay out so you done it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting in there and seeing what you can do. If you don't get in and work inside some political part, then you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what, what they're doing to know. You can learn by getting involved. Maybe you won't even enter something, you won't know a thing about it. If you get in there and get involved, then you'll learn something about it. Mm -hmm. You can't help but learn if you got the intelligence at all. Mm -hmm. So there's just so much to be done, and there's no use in nobody not to be an industry. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, uh, that's the best thing anybody can do if, mm -hmm. if they want to do that. Well, some people want to have a house and say, me, I wouldn't want it. Mm -hmm. If I have one room and a little place to make me some coffee, it's all I want. Mm -hmm. I've never been interested in money. Mm -hmm. I want to have enough to make a living and get by, but as far as being interested in money, to make money, I just found out a long time ago that nobody can get rich in a lifetime, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would we have to be some kind of skullduggery, or some kind of landfall, some kind of maneuver. Mm -hmm. When you, you had a brief second marriage, didn't you? Yeah. Along in the 50s mm -hmm. or something? Was, when you got married, were you thinking of, of getting out of organizing? No. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, was not the intention when I married, but then when, when I married, he, he wanted me to quit. And that caused a trouble. I, oh, I couldn't, yeah. I just wouldn't want to do that. I, I'd been alone too long I and mean, worked too long. Mm -hmm. too, I would never give up. I didn't never think enough of nobody to give up later. Mm -hmm. Why did he decide after you got well, married that he wanted you? Who knows, you know. They change, people sometimes change. You think you know people, but you don't know them until you really live with them. Mm -hmm. And, uh... But you've never really... I think he was a little jealous of my activity. Mm-hmm. Some men are. They, he was the type of person who wanted to be the boss. He was... He always said he was a Westerner, and the men, men, Western men, they didn't have a leader woman. To, actually, I mean, all this though was came afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about other men that you've known or been involved with over the years? Have you had that problem of of men being sort of threatened by your mm -hmm. work or your oh. strength? Oh, I had a long, good you know? friendship with one man. It it uh, was. Uh, was one of them, I'd say, uh, a friendship that uh, helped me in a lot of ways. Uh, he was not, uh, I never uh, had any intimate relationship with nobody in the I felt that was something that you had to keep apart from your work. I've always mm -hmm. felt that even when I worked in a shop, a lot of girls tried to go to the boss and things like that. Mm -hmm. To me, I felt like that was something you had to keep separate from. Mm -hmm. And I felt that way when I got in the labor movement. And I wouldn't say I might have found somebody. I might have found somebody that I had and would have got it, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I never looked and never tried. I mm -hmm. always kept my social life out apart from my, my work. So because of the fact, though, that you had to be very careful being a woman of who you made friends, men friends with. Mm -hmm. Why well, the person that I had was through a Mary Morgan, who I trusted, and we, she had a friend, and he, he brought a friend, and mm -hmm. we went out together, and uh, all the years uh, until he passed away, uh, we were good friends. Mm -hmm. Nothing more, never in my mind, ever want to marry never him or nobody else. Mm -hmm. Because I was burdened with a mother and father to have support, and I had a child to raise, and I just couldn't 
Mm -hmm. I didn't entertain ever marrying again. Mm -hmm. Did you feel? Later. Did you feel any conflicts about uh, having your parents mostly take care of the raising of your child? Did oh you no, feel like it was the best thing that ever happened. Because I, as I said, I'd always had to work, mm -hmm. and uh, having my mother and father able to take care of me was the best thing that ever happened. Mm -hmm. He never felt any no, resentment no, that she no. should have been around. No. No, that's right. That's great. Um, oh, you, you have not ever been involved in any kind of, on any kind of issues of involving women specifically, any kind of women's rights issues. Not, not that Mhm. Because I never felt that we, we, and as I tell the people in the Coalition Labor Union, we, we don't have the same problems that they have. We don't have the problems in our union they seem to have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I tell them quite frankly, don't wait till they offer it to you. Go out and fight for it. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. I fought up in the man's world. And uh, and uh, I think they could do it. And they could, they got to qualify. Mm -hmm. They pay their dues. They can't step in. It's not their fault that uh, they weren't hired. It was the men's fault working that job they weren't hired. Mm -hmm. It was the company's fault. So don't blame the men in there because the company didn't hire you, the company didn't hire you. Mm -hmm. But you have to get in there and show mm -hmm. them. If you get in there and show it, I think most of the people, men, are, there has been women in, 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 in unions where there's predominant men are a big majority of the men that just had recognition. But they earned it and showed it. Mm -hmm. I don't say all of them has gotten there that could have gotten there. Mm -hmm. But some of them sit back and whines and don't cry. Mm -hmm. When was the Coalition of Labor Union Women organized? When was it organized? Well, I got my leg broke. I didn't get to go to the first meeting. Mm -hmm. but I wasn't able to have my leg broke with all my crutches. So it must have been in the, I think it was December 73. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as a, a important or significant? organization? Really, what do you think I don't. Gonna come out? Uh -huh. Really, I don't, because the way I feel about it is the way I feel about a lot of the black separatists. Uh -huh. They fight for equality, they don't want to round the divide uh -huh. And, uh, I mean, I just don't see, I just don't see uh, that it's going to, uh, that's not going to be the way they're going to change things. Mm -hmm. If that's whatever they're going to change, now I can work with them and do what I can to try to help those who think they need it. Mm -hmm. And in any way, shape, or form, but the main thing that I want to do, I want to. I knew it would fail if it kept going like it was, and I want the true trade unions to get in there and try to run it. In uh, in 1970, a new organizational structure was set up, wasn't it? And you, your position changed somewhat? Oh. You, you became area? Well, that, we set up more directors. joint boards. We set mm -hmm. up more joint boards. Uh, it, uh, the south, eight southeastern states are just too big for one person or even two people to try to direct. Mm -hmm. And we got more shops in the union. We got more uh, uh, joint boards. Mm -hmm. And all the states had a joint board. Alabama had two joint boards. Tennessee had two joint boards. Mm -hmm. it. And uh, they split it up and put the organizing almost on the direction of the joint board manager with an organizing director attached to each joint board. Mm -hmm. And the staff worked on this organizing director with the joint board manager really as a director overall. Mm -hmm. Uh, in this area, we only had we had a Georgia joint board, but at that time we didn't have any, any joint boards in the Carolinas. And uh, I was made organizing director of Georgia, Northern South Carolina, and part of Virginia. Uh, not attached to a joint board. I see. And until we got the Carolinas, uh, Virginia joint board, or until they put me back in the administration, maybe joint board manager in Alabama. They had to split this area up because it was becoming, it was too big. And uh, they put the uh, Carolinas under the uh, 
Carolina, Virginia, John Bow. Mm -hmm. So that sound. That's and that's when it works the better, Dickinson died more direct. at that time and Charles English. Yeah, well, Charlie had really took over. Gladys had gotten sick and had to retire before she passed away. Mm -hmm. And Charlie was Southern, is still Southern director mm -hmm. and uh, manager of the Southeastern Region of Four, mm -hmm. which carries all the eight Southern states, right. Southeastern states. Mm -hmm. And he's over on the whole thing. But it's running a lot better because people are more, this traveling is not involved. Mm -hmm. People can work closer to the home where we used to. We had to go from, we didn't know one day where it was going to be the next a lot of time. Mm -hmm. We had organizers spread so far out working on the director, and the director couldn't possibly make the situations as often as they should have to help and assist and advise and to direct wherever necessary. It's working out better this mm -hmm, way. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your position exactly now? Well, I'm still, yeah. I'm still director of organization in Georgia, mm -hmm. and manager of the North Alabama Area Joint Board, mm -hmm. and that, I kind of in charge of administration of the locals and organizing in North Alabama. I see. Uh, what is the real difference in the what in your your work? between these two um, situations? Well, organizing is trying to organize new shops. Of course, you've got to be able to know all about the laws and everything that governs organization, protection of work and the work of rights. And uh, actually, in the right to work states, you have to be very careful to keep your union strong. See that the business agents not all, so a business agent, they have to be an organizer too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, administering the contracts and negotiating new contracts and carrying all all, all the business of the uh, joint board mm -hmm. to all the business there's a lot of it <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to see that for well, the joint board the clearing house for all the locals they handle all the books and everything for the local mm -hmm. and I have to see that the money spent right watch that and in fact run the union mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's uh, about all I can say about it <laughs> that's all the questions I have is there anything else that we haven't talked about or anything that you think we should no okay Oh, we could talk about a lot of other things, but I think <laughs> it covers it pretty <laughs> okay. well.